Hello and welcome to another episode of the Hello Hosty podcast. Today I am joined by Javier Hidalgo from Residential City Apartments. Javier has 20 properties under management and he's about to take on his 21st. Javier, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much for this opportunity, Clive. Um, I must say that this is my first podcast. So please bear with me, be patient, and I will try my best. Yeah, of course, you're doing a great job so far. We were actually, we, we had a bit of a chat just before uh, be before we started, and Javier was telling me some interesting stuff. You, you operate in London, is that correct? That's correct. At the moment, yes, at present, we are based in London, and uh, even though uh, we operate outside of London too, but uh, most of our properties are in London, yes. Okay, and, and you're, um, but you're originally from Spain. Yeah, that is correct. Um, I was I was born in Spain, um, and then I I decided to come to London uh, when I was twenty. Um, if you want, I can give you a little bit of of background of the reason why. Please do. Uh, sure. So I I I wasn't good at, at school to start with. So um, I started working when at the age of sixteen, and and. Um, um, since my first paycheck, I, I knew straight away that um, I wanted to work for myself because I saw that uh, just working for someone else is it wasn't it wasn't for me. Um, the thing is that at that time I I didn't know what to do at the age of sixteen. I was a little bit lost. So um, what I did is I work until the age of twenty in Spain. Uh, doing different types of jobs from unloading trucks full of car tires. So very labor intensive work to, for example, um, selling the installation of natural gas in new developments. So kind of sales related job. Uh, so yeah, just a variety, just different type of jobs in Spain. Uh, at that time, Spain was going through a recession, so it was a tough time for a 16 or 20 year old without studies to find a permanent job. So with my last paycheck, I made the decision to uh, move to a different country, which was the UK, uh, London specifically. So I, I, I just packed my luggage um, with a couple of thousand pounds that I have saved. I moved to the UK and I started from zero. Uh, didn't know anyone here. I didn't have a job. I barely speak any English. So I had to start by washing dishes as a kitchen porter in a restaurant. Um, I'm just doing cleaning jobs. I'm just being a waiter until I discover um, the, what the property is and how important um, and how much demand in property was in London. Mm -hmm. uh, and decided that this is something that I can learn myself, is something that I can improve um, and offer an amazing service to my clients and decided to, let's say, start the journey. Mm -hmm. um, that's where we are right now. Yeah. Well, fantastic job. You've, um, you've, you've come quite a long way from when you first arrived, barely any English and, and only a few, you know, a few thousand pounds in your pockets to, to now running, running 20, soon to be 21 properties. So congratulations on, on, on this journey so far. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, it hasn't, it haven't been an easy journey, but I think we are just, um, we are just starting. I have really big dreams. Um, and, and this is just us getting started. Uh, good. Good have, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Good. So why, why don't we, um, why don't we talk a little bit about, um, residential, what, t tell us what it is you, what it is the service you offer. And, and, and who you offer the service to. Tell us a bit about your business. Yeah, absolutely. So in Residential City, we offer um, a vari variety of services from property management. We have, as you said, um, several properties under management, uh, different type of properties from, let's say, single households to HMOs, where we have five, six uh, different uh, tenants or occupants in the property. Uh, also, we have started investing in uh, rent to service accommodation, or um, I think they call it Airbnb arbitrage. Arbitrage. Uh, in, in the, the US. That's the American term, the arbitrage. Yeah. The, 
in the UK, the, the, we love an acronym. So it's uh, R2SA, so Rent to Service Accommodation, yeah. Rent to Service Accommodation and Rent to HMO, yeah. uh, I think is a good a starting point to, let's say, get you know your feet in the field and start to basically, you put your money with your mouth is, you're taking the liability of, of paying the rent, of guaranteeing the rent to the property owner. And, and then you obviously have to make sure that uh, the rent is paid every time, every month, um, and you basically um, offer, I mean, yeah, I mean, let's say you put, what is the expression? You put your words where your mouth is or-, or put your money where your mouth is. Yeah, exactly. you to back yourself, basically. You have to say That's you're right. to, to take on these on, on these liabilities, these rents, and, and you're, you're delivering by, uh, by, by filling them with, with happy tenants, whether they be short-term. So, so that is a, correct. a lot of the properties you have are, are short-term rentals. Is that correct, R2S? Um, yes, that is, that is, that is correct. Mm. Um, for me, I know many people would say that um, it's not an ideal strategy because someone is taking advantage of the capital appreciation of the property, uh, which is something that I cannot do when I am renting from the owner. But uh, I have a clear plan of action, which is get a specific amount of these properties that then will generate a specific amount of monthly cash flow, and then starting to do buy refinance uh, sorry, buy, ref buy reform is refinance and rent, yeah. uh, which will give me this capital appreciation. Yeah. Uh, that would be my, my next step. That's counting on the property continuing to, to, to go up in line with, uh, in line with the last 40 years. I mean, I, 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 I agree with you. I think it's, I think it's the best bet there is the asset appreciation and, but rent to rent or rent to, uh, R2SA rent to service accommodation is a fantastic model for, but uh, I call it kind of like high octane because it, it's great for cash flow, produces cash flow. You don't get asset appreciation, but what you do get is cash flow to accumulate enough funds to go and get into uh, buying some properties where you can benefit from the asset appreciation. Absolutely. And um, you learn the business inside out. So when the time comes to uh, have your name in, in the title, you being the owner of, of the property, um, you already know what to do. So that you, I believe you reduce the possibilities of, of doing mistakes. Um, and my plan is also to work with investors. So uh, using strategies such as no money down. Uh, mm -hmm. So working with an investor that is funding the whole operation um, and they can all benefit from, from it. Good. Okay. So the no money down. I'm aware of um, progressive uh, is the, the, um, Kevin McDonald. Progressive property is this the, who you're referencing? No money down. Um, yes, I, I have taken I have taken a, a training with Progressive Property okay. uh, for the past year. So yes, this is one of the yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, strategies. I, I have the belief that uh, money is scarce, but then you realize that it is true that many people have their savings. Sorry, excuse me. There's um, yeah. a fire alarm in the, in this building. Oh go. Somebody's probably cooking toast downstairs. Bear with me a second. I'm going to mute. This. Just check that is a, a, a false. Oh, that was loud. <laughs> I yeah. couldn't hear it. You did. You didn't hear it. No. Oh, that's so interesting. Obviously, the 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 microphone doesn't pick up the uh, that high pitch, but it was whoop, mm -hmm. whoop, super loud. But um, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, please. That's okay. Yeah. Just remind me what we what we were discussing. Um, well, I was about to I was about to ask you what what is your current bottleneck in the business. We were talking about the training you've done, but I'd like to know what is currently in your business. What is what is the the bottleneck that is uh, that you're focusing on overcoming right now? Um, I believe the businesses are directly correlated to uh, the person behind that is running the business. Uh, therefore, is their own mindset and their own beliefs. Um, in my case, uh, 
I didn't think that fitness, for example, was such an important thing. Um, in the order of, of priorities that I had, for example, business, sorry, uh, fitness was not one of my main priorities, but I come to the realization that uh, it is very important that everything starts with, with yourself, your mindset, how you feel, um, how you know determined you are to, uh, yeah, you might be determined to achieve something in business, but everything starts with your own self and, and fitness is what is fueling your brain. Mm -hmm. So for example, that was a mistake that I did um, that I am uh, currently working on just to, you know, have, let's say the whole, the whole package. You have yeah. what they call the wealth. Um, you have the family, you have the business, you have the physique. And I believe that is, that is what uh, I am trying to achieve yeah. and I'm currently working on. Physical fitness. Yeah. It's important to keep the a fit body, fit mind, you know? Definitely. So, um, so what is the biggest challenge that you face in business currently today? Um, in this, I think this type of business is a people type of business where you have to uh, allow people to do their work. You have to rely on third parties. Uh, and therefore, you know, it is, it, is, it is difficult sometimes when you have high expectations, when, when you hold yourself accountable uh, to high standards, uh, expecting that everyone else that is working with you has the same standards, um, it is it is a difficult part. I mean, you with you know by working with many people, you can see that uh, it is it is relative to each individual. Everyone has their own their own standards. Um, but how I I manage it, I would say with you know. A lot of patience. Um, I'm just being as proactive as possible. Mm. I think my background in property management really helps to be proactive and to see the things before they happen. And that's an advantage that I can take into service accommodation, for example, with uh, you know, guests turning up or leaky taps or you know, any sort of maintenance issues or other so issues that you face. So would it be fair to say team building is a challenge that you, you, you're currently facing? Um, yes, definitely. Um, I have the idea, I, ha I always had the idea that I could do everything on my own, but then you realize that uh, the biggest companies are always partnerships. You need, you need other people. Um, if you ask for help, there is many people out there that is willing to help you. Um, without anything in return, any yeah. you know incentive to make money for themselves. So that has opened my mind to really ask for help. Uh, and um, yeah, I can definitely say that is is uh, is very important. Is yeah. you know. So yeah, I, I agree. It, it's um, I'm the same. I'm in business. I'm quite a, alone. Uh, no. I, I work well on my own, but I, I mean, obviously, I have team i have teams and um and they we collaborate they're they're fantastic but of, often in terms of like business partnerships i've um i found it so helpful to have a group of people that that you can call upon for advice and like a network to give you uh the right information advice and, uh, to motivate you as well to see other people achieving around you it's it's really it's really important to have a good a good strong network around you like a good team of people around you um, so I can I can see the value in in that in that comment. definitely definitely I mean from for myself I, I I really had some bad experiences when I started I I wanted to start this business with a partner and at the end that didn't work out very well so um, I think that affected my thinking process that hey if I cannot relay on someone because I had relay on someone in the past and they let me down then I'm going to do everything myself um, and that will be fine. But, you know, over time you realize that, yes, it is possible, but just by working with other people, you increase your opportunities to, you know, learn more, uh, grow your business. Um, as you said, just having a 
a network of people surrounding you yeah. that uh, yeah will really help you to to grow up as a business owner. I guess with the the network thing, it's like if you've got one capable mind thinking about a problem, then the the you'll come you you you've only got the, the cognitive capacity of one individual. As a group of people, you can double it, treble it, quadruple it, five x it. And if one of those people a Mensa level intelligence, then you know it's um it's about solving challenges. Really, I think biz- a lot of business is just solving challenges day to day, and the more minds on 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 that on each challenge, the better. Um, Hundred um, percent. That's that's exactly how I was describing it myself. Um, two brains will have you know more uh, more input, different perspectives. So yeah, hundred percent. I think is is always beneficial to surround yourself with like-minded people, mm. even though for some for some for example, I consider myself introverted. So I find it difficult to you know go out, network, explain what I do. Yeah. But at the end, you know, business is not supposed to be easy. So you have to really put yourself in uncomfortable situations. Yeah. Um, um, hey, you will discover that uh, many things could happen. Yeah. So it's interesting you say that because um, I've noticed um, there's some partnerships out there. We spoke about progressive property. So like Rob Moore and Mark Homer, they're completely different character types. You know, Rob Moore is clearly an extrovert, uh, extrovert in the way he dresses, talks, the fact he he he's very public and um whereas on the other hand mark homer's definitely more introverted and they have ov- obviously different complementary skill sets but you can see a partnership like that where there's two individuals that are very different but they've partnered together and they really work well together they complement each other so i guess there's there's um many many benefits to partnering that's got to be with the right person and um a right right person for you uh, as an individual I do agree. Um, as as you said, I I I, I analyze them exactly as as you did, and I have I have met them in in, in person a few times. So um, as you said, they are they are completely different individuals. As they said, Mark Homer focusing spreadsheets, and then Rob Moore is is the face. He focuses in digital marketing. Um, completely different individuals, but just by joining together, they make I think one of the you know, biggest uh, teams, yeah. training companies in, in the UK or one of one of the biggest. Yeah, yeah, an amazing training company. Yeah, it's very definitely. Um, so how, how do you manage a business that requires you to be online 24 hours a day? Um, how do you how do you find managing this? Do you how do you how do you keep that covered? Um, I think you have to really um, let me think about this one. I think you have to, you know, really be open to relay on 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 other people. Be open to have uh, virtual assistants and understanding that uh, uh, no one else is gonna have the motivation to do the things as the owner of the business. So you have to compromise that. You know, if you are working with someone else, um, if they do things at a, you know, seventy five percent as good as you do. That is, you know, that's that's very good. It is acceptable. Mm. Uh, um, as we said before, it's just being able to ask people for help. Uh, and, um, you know, you will realize that there is many people out there that is willing to to help you. Um, and yeah, by, by having processes, systems, um, that is, I think, uh, important as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so what kind of what kind of uh, tech do you use? What kind of software solutions do you have in place to help you manage? At, at the moment, I believe because we don't have many properties under management, uh, we've been using uh, just spreadsheets for, for yeah. data. Um, obviously, we do need a channel manager uh, for the service accommodation side of things. We need a pricing software. Yeah. Uh, to make sure that the price is 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 changing depending on what is happening in the area where the property is located, um, that's what I also believe. What you are currently working on, mm-hmm. it is very interesting, which yeah. is uh, using artificial intelligence. Um, is is something that I am definitely going to be uh, checking out thoroughly and see if if we can implement it because hey. If it can save time and at the same time you don't compromise in 
in the service that you offer to the people, I mm. think is, is a great thing. Yeah, I think really, um, from my perspective, like I've been on a, a, a journey as a property manager because I'm personally a property manager. Uh, we, we have two property management companies, one with properties in the UK, one with properties outside the, the country. And um, one of the biggest challenges that we found in our team, because it's constant, it never goes away. And you, it, it's okay if you've got one or two properties, then yeah, sure, you know, a few messages here and there, it's fine. But when you start to scale beyond two or beyond one really when you when you start to to scale it the, mm -hmm. these communications are the same thing like they're almost the same questions that you'll get time in time out and a lot of the time the information's available to the guests they in in documentation you've sent to them and now with the birth of ai we've been able to build this software tool which responds in the most empathetic human lovely lovely responses and accurate like it's incredible how this this software we've been able to build can learn about your properties easily integrate with your uh with your with the platforms that you advertise on and communicate natively through those platforms automatically with guests i, I saw uh we had a, a guest um recently i mean it's amazing just to watch normal communications but we had a guest recently that had to top pressure up in a boiler the pressure had fallen and um, mm -hmm. the had dropped and i saw that I, I was watching the conversation go through the system and I saw the AI talking the guest through the process of topping up the pressure in the boiler. So the, oh. and the guest was grateful, happy. And these were instantaneous responses. It's an, it's an amazing time for technology. When I first started as a property manager uh, 15 years ago, I started to think, okay, there's, there's, got to be some tech, there's got to be some tech out there, some software solutions that are going to solve the mm -hmm. challenge that we had. So I went and I did a lot of shopping around and basically the tech just wasn't there. It wasn't at the level we needed. And um, so I, I kind of turned my back on on the idea of tech for a few years and um, was just using Excel spreadsheets and, and and pen and paper and Google free software. And until mm -hmm. until uh, until about five years ago, um, I, I got on board with a concept of now looking into a channel manager again. And now we use Price Labs and mm -hmm. uh, Price Labs is fantastic. Dynamic pricing. And 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 now with with the birth of AI and the ability that we've been we've been granted through AI to be able to build uh, Alina, the guest communication tool, I'm I'm an absolute advocate for implementing as much tech as possible. Of course, <laughs> of course. Now, yeah. I think it is it is amazing when when you tell me all of this. It reminds me to a book from uh, I think it's Peter Thiel, Zero to One. Yes, I um, I'm not sure if you have read it or not. Read it's it, yeah. basically just creating something new, not just not just taking something that is already there. Um, I'm, I'm just, you know, changing the approaches. And this is what I need. There is nothing that I am happy to uh, accept in terms of software. So I am going to, you know, create it myself, uh, mixing, you know, technology, uh, artificial intelligence with um, a, a channel manager. Um, you know, as you tell me, it, it is able to tell the guests how to top up the pressure, which I think I didn't know they have that much uh, capability because that is type of a, you know, there is a risk involved in telling someone to top up the boiler. So uh, yeah, if, you know, I think it's, it's great. I'm definitely gonna I'll, check I'll, it I'll out. Give you, um, I'll give you a, a, a quick demo of it once we finish the, the, the conversation. But we, uh, the, we've, we've, got, um, we've got a few, a few, a few early adopters that are, are, in, are using the software and really our, our our approach is we want to we want to we want to we want to listen to the feedback and we want because the product is constantly building and changing and shaping and growing and mm -hmm. basically we're basically shaping the the product alina to serve the early adopters the guys that are in the pioneer group and um we had a guy uh, a, a few days ago stones throw apartments from brighton um and he sent us a message saying that the ai didn't fully um because they have a complex system around their parking um mm -hmm. because you, there, there was basically you're allowed one car for free and then you have to pay for subsequent subsequent cars and then okay. understanding where to park and the hours and all of this information was in their guidebook but the ai hadn't <laughs> processed it in such a way now he sent us this this feedback the uh, tech team took his response his feedback and shaped uh, changed the way that our sort of software is built so that now fully understands it sends out uh, bank details for payment tells them when to pay 
tells them what day they can park where how many if they if the guest says hey i'm coming with three cars and then it knows to say okay yes one car is free the other two you're going to have to pay for this is how you pay for them this is when you do it um wow. it's really cool to see that this thing is growing to serve uh to serve our, our users it's it's i mean it's a really it's a really cool time for this business in general but watching this product grow is also super special so uh back back to you a, qu a question that I'd, I'd like to ask you is so if you were to give yourself some advice when you first started out if you could have a conversation with the with the younger you what would mm -hmm. you be the advice that you gave yourself um i would i would tell myself to uh invest invest in if my in myself earlier um it is it is okay to be lost when you are 16 when you are 19 when you are 20 in the sense that you know you want to have your own business but you don't know what to do so if if you are able obviously to invest money in in yourself by uh, by having a mentor by taking some sort of training um, i i do think that that is you know really important and and that can help you to see whether this is something you want to do or you want to explore further or not. And yes, I mean, I would say that is, that is yeah, yes, invest in yourself. And for example, if, if you are unable because you don't have the uh, finance to do it, uh, just work for someone, just, just select, let's say select, a, the owner of the company that you uh, you agree with the principles they follow. Um, so so not just the company, just the director, the person that runs the business. Mm -hmm. And if their principles, um, ethics uh, match with yours, uh, really approach the company, um, offer to work work for them, even if it's for free, um, for a, obviously for a you know a specific amount of time and just you know learn how a good business is run with a with with the right right director i mean this is yeah. something that i think everyone can do and and is is going to be really helpful for the rest of your life so i would say that good that's some good advice yeah follow the people that have been there and done that and uh follow, follow those that uh, know what they're doing that's uh, some sound yeah i would do that so do you have any uh any any tips tricks or hacks that you can recommend for other people to follow Tips. I mean, hacks. I was that. It is a good question. I was thinking about it. Um, I I don't personally think there are any hacks. Um, I would say it's just it's just how you uh be how how you behave as a human being. Um, just by being a you know a person of honor. Um, I think as 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 a you know as as a man, the only thing you have is is your word. So, uh, you know, you just make sure that you act according to your words um, and also, you know, treat everyone with respect, look after the people around you um, and, and never uh, over promise and under deliver. Yeah. You, you know, okay. Because that's that's going to be a big Good words, good deeds. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's it. Um, always go the extra mile. Always try to over deliver. So, uh, I mean, since we started, we haven't lost any property owners that we are working with. We're only adding new ones. Yeah. So I think that goes to show that what we offer is, is, uh, is good. It's good. And it's, you know, so, we work with big developers. Some of them, we have six, seven properties under management. Mm -hmm. So they can just like that change to someone else. Yeah. So I think if the fact that they are sticking with us is showing that good. we're doing something right. And, uh, um, yeah, I mean, I would say that just to keep it simple, be a person of honor. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, that's, some, yeah, I would that's, say that. sound, that, that's a, some sound advice. I found that, I mean, it's kind of a bit of like a, a holy grail in this business is taking on new properties. That's like the biggest challenge that everyone has. I found that in our business, there's a few hacks around that. Some mm -hmm. we found through doing certain things, but the best is word of mouth. And there's no question, the property the property owners that we work with, they, I know, I know this, they tell me that they are very, very happy with our arrangement, that they that they mm -hmm. love working with us. With some guys we've been working with for like, well, 14 years, uh, you know, a long, a long time. And these these property owners have become good friends of mine, um, just be just through providing the best possible service. So making sure that they're happy, 
treating them with with honor respect being uh trustworthy as you say a man of your word um mm -hmm. it's really useful so I, I agree with you 100 um uh, word of mouth it, it has worked uh, very well for us too um when when you offer a great uh service or product overall uh the people will recommend it um, um and that's really that's that's that is great so, uh, Javier, um, if people wanted to find out more about you and about Residential City, how would they do this? Um, they can go to our webpage, which is uh, www.residentialcity.co.uk. Um, they can find us in Instagram uh, under the same name, in Facebook under Residential City London. We try to offer some value there by offering uh, tips uh, to property owners, Mm -hmm. or just a guest in general um if they message the message will come directly to me and i will be help um, i will be happy to just help other people really um and even do some business if if that is that is the case so yeah excellent okay excellent javier i'm gonna draw the podcast to a close there but it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you um and i wish, wish you the best in in your adventure <laughs> thank you claire thank you so much for this opportunity